My name is Siddharth Sunil, so I'm a national level rower. I've been rowing for the past 14 years now. And I started the sport in the year of 2008. So I initially started to lose some weight. I was a pretty overweight kid. So I was put here to find a sport that I enjoy. Just so happened I like this the most. And one thing led to another. What started as something with which I could get fit through became competitive. Rode my first nationals in the year 2009. Then I represented a bunch of club events and national championships through the years. In 2014, I won my first nationals at the Open Sprints in Calcutta. And in 2016, we were the national silver medalists in the men's pair in the 2000 meters, which just so happened to be, I think, the first medal for Tamil Nadu in close to 35 years in the 2000 meters. And I've rode one international race, the Asia Cup in Singapore in 2016, where I managed to finish in the top six. And uh, it's after that, it was 2017 was the year where I went to the national camp for the Asian Championships. And uh, a year after that, I moved on, pursued my, uh, wanted to pursue my career. So right now, I'm a strength and conditioning coach. I work with athletes across various sports to improve their sports performance. I feel, uh, even from a career standpoint, rowing has helped me a lot. I mean, if it wasn't for rowing, I don't think I would have found my passion with regards to my career as well, you know. So, you spend years as an athlete, you realize the joys of competing yourself. And eventually, when you're done with the sport, there is a need for you to stay in touch with it. And through that, you go into a career that is related to this. So, it's very fulfilling. I mean, uh, it's... This sport has given me a life which I never thought would have been possible without it. So, my advice to youngsters would be this. Rowing is a fantastic sport. It's, ad it's addictive. There is definitely a personal element to it, you know. It gives you a lot of self-confidence when you win because this sport, as much as there are teams in a boat, it's also about how well you perform by yourself. And uh, I believe nothing gives you more self-confidence than that, you know. The fact that you know that you can work hard and get things done on your own without any help. There's nothing more empowering than that. I believe, I certainly do believe that this can help a lot of kids come out of whatever they're facing, you know. If the kid is anxious, if the kid has a lack of self-confidence, you know. If the kid hasn't, isn't really happy, then this is a sport that they can take up because there's, it is so rewarding in the long run. But... Uh, that being said, you have to be patient. This is not a sport where you will find success overnight. You know, it is going to take time. In fact, uh, when you look at uh, the age band of most international medalists in the sport at the world level, it's between the age of 30, 25 to 35. So this is a sport where you mature pretty late. You know, if you're in cricket, you're done by 30. You're done by 32, 33 if you're a fast bowler. But in rowing, by the time you're 32, that's when you're coming into your own. So this sport does take time, but it's certainly an investment. It's an investment on your health. It's an investment on your well-being and it's something that you can truly enjoy. Uh, what kind of uh, fitness regimen one should go through for this? The sport is heavily endurance based, so there's a lot of mileage. And uh, there is also certainly a strength component to it. Now, the standard international distance is 2,000 meters. So that places it somewhere in the, so that places it in the band of a middle distance sport. So you need a lot of endurance, but at the same time, you also need a lot of strength and power. So there's a lot of mileage on the water. We do a ton of cross training on the bike, sometimes running, and there is a lot of weight training. Now, most endurance sports, classic endurance sports, they don't advocate weight training purely because of the fact that you don't want to get too heavy, but I believe that's all dogma. For rowing, it is required. There is a large strength component to it and an endurance component. So, physiologically, this is easily one of the most difficult sports you can take part in. But the flip side is, you can get really fit and strong doing this and you can be very very fit all the way up to your 60s and 70s in fact rowing is one of those sports where the masters events are flourishing you know if you go to a world master championship you have more than 1000 participants and most of them are in their 50s so this is a sport that anybody can take up at any time training is definitely rigorous to answer your question it's both parts endurance and strength but it encompasses what it means to be an athlete with peak performance standards. You know. In other sports like cricket, that's a group activity. There are many yeah. other players who 
with whom you can in fact get along and you can probably get trained in this it's more of an independent kind of a thing where i get trained independently and it all depends on my personal in fact interest and passion how does in fact one come across that challenge see when it comes to rowing there are different boat classes so when we talk about the single skull it's all you you know there are days where you're going to be lonely it's just you and your coach and it all depends on how you perform but there is all but there are also bigger boats the team boats are there now rowing is so when it comes to the dynamic of a team boat it's pretty interesting as much as you are part of a team you are competing for your seat till the last week so there are others out there to take your seat now, only four people can row in a fours only eight people can row in eight but a rowing squad has 25 people now in cricket every player has their duty some fielders bowlers batsmen wicket keepers they complement each other right now in rowing eight people are pretty much doing the same thing they just row on different sides right so as much as there is a team element to it your teammates can certainly empower you but uh, your team is not decided until the last month or so so you are fighting for your seat in the boat so there is an individual comp- there is an there is a competent individualistic element here to the sport even in a team boat you will notice it with most rowers that's why rowers are highly motivated athletes till the last day they train hard they may like it may not be visible from outside but during but during practice seasons there is competition in the boat you know because they're fighting for their seat so whichever combination the fastest goes so there is definitely an individual element in the team dynamic as well it's pretty interesting that way uh is this an expensive uh, passion the sport is expensive yes i mean uh, if you were to buy international class boats even a single skull like this costs around 2 lakhs and then you talk about the equipment when you look at a big boat like the 8 seater if you're talking about the top international standard boats they're close to 10 lakhs it is an expensive sport and it requires a lot of funding so how do you manage so far in fact all along you have been self funded or you have been sponsored by somebody mm, no i have never been sponsored by somebody so i am a member of boat club so in that way i'm fortunate enough to you know get the best equipment so so the club has the club has a rich history of rowing for so the club is more than 150 years old and we are a social club we have other facilities so there's a lot of funding that comes in to make sure we have good equipment now unfortunately most other clubs outside a boat club except the army don't have this privilege now if there is one request that i would like to make to the government is we need to enhance funding for the sport and also at the same time it also comes we, we also need to talk about athlete time investment you know as i said rowing is a sport that you mature pretty late in so what that means is you need to spend more time preparing the athlete for peak performance so from what i have seen in national camps and even in the setup here they keep switching athletes every year you're not going to find success that way yeah you will be successful at the asian level but you've been successful at the asian level for 20 years if you truly want to be successful at the world level you got to invest in a pool of athletes for the long run i'm talking about 4 years plus you need to have a long term program and that also requires funding so that's my only request to the authorities so who are the current champions from india right now in rowing the current champions from india so right now indian rowing is in a transitional phase we had uh, two very very high rated row scholars called swaran singh and datu bokanal swaran was the 10- 2012 olympic uh, rower for us and datu represented the olympics in 2016 the both of them ever since i think have retired from the sport now we have a bunch of we have fresh youngsters in the indian scene in fact there is one particular boy right now in the camp parminder singh grewal he seems to be the next indian sensation so you might want to watch out for him asian games 2022 internationally internationally right now see the international field in rowing is very competitive you really can't say who you really clearly can't tell who the number one star is it's always a battle between the top 6 but if you had asked me my personal favorite today is uh, the norwegian scholar kettle botch i mean his rowing is a treat to watch and uh, according to me i think he is one of the best internationally advice to youngsters okay advice to youngsters take up the sport you will enjoy it but at the same time get ready to invest time in it because this is not a sport that you're going to find success overnight you are going to have your fair share of tough days but it law eventually be worth it
I mean, the benefits you get out of this sport is extremely rewarding. It sets you up for a very successful life later on. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Thank you.